time lab, man. Check this out. We did an awesome video on yesterday comparing the Colorado Buffaloes to my South Carolina Gamecocks coming off that 1 and uh, 10 season and then 0 and 11 season or what have you back in the early 2000s or what have you. Listen, got a good coach, got two good coaches, got Lou Holtz followed by Steve Spurrier, became nationally rev relevant, were on TV every game. And anytime that happens, people are going to feel like you know, when you have a, a, a coach with a personality that's bigger than life or as big as the game itself, you're going to get haters. You're going to get people that don't want to see you do well. We have people that, oh, South Carolina ain't that good. Why are they on ESPN every game? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? But us as a fan base, we understood as long as South Carolina improved, improved and competed, everybody's going to be fine. William Bryce Stadium is going to have 83,000 on every Saturday. It didn't matter if they were 0-10 or 0-11 or what it was. It's just one of those things that once you get that fan base believing, you're going to get the people behind it and you're going to get the recruits. Now, it's not like it wasn't then like it is now. If we had had the transfer portal back then, I'm sure it would have been insane because back at that point in time, you transfer, you lost a year. Now you can transfer, you're not losing anything. You can just go from school to school to school. If it had been like that, when we got Steve Spurrier at the University of South Carolina and you didn't just have to raw recruit people to come to the school or what have you it could have been a whole lot different and that's why i feel like the the colorado buffaloes it's just like having steve spurrier and lou holtz on steroids you got tons of people that want to play for those legendary coaches but i can't i can't leave this school because i can't lose this year of eligibility and so with that being a deterrent at those times it slowed the process of of you of south carolina again i, I look i gotta relent and say South Carolina, y'all done told me that we lost last week and we lost to North Carolina, so I can't even call them Carolina no more. I got to call them South Carolina because they're not the real USC, but I digress. Anyway, listen, so and with that being the case, yes, that's going to be a much slower process. Building through the portal, you can build a team much faster. Lincoln Riley did it. Other teams have done it. Matt Rule, they're saying, you know, they, 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 they're acting like he's done it. All this stuff. Most people don't understand how quickly you can you can get your team back together. And when you got a coach like this, who's magnet, as magnetic as Coach Prime is, it's gonna happen in a hurry. And people are shaking in their boots because they know that they may have the pedigree, they may have the university, they may have the facilities, but they do not have the, the, the je ne sais quoi that Coach Prime has that draws people under him and have them want to run through a brick wall for him. And that's what we're going to talk about today, man. But before we get started, make sure y'all like the video. Comment y'all thoughts down below. Y'all know where we're going with this thing. To the moon, Alice! More or less what we're talking about right now. We're going to listen to this. Paul Feinbaum. Some people said he's not changed his tune. He's saying the same thing behind closed doors. This is just TV speak. This is TV talk. And that's all. It's, it's nothing more than that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with y'all. But... Just like Stephen A. Smith said uh, at the conclusion of, of this, it doesn't matter if they lose in Nebraska. It doesn't matter if they lose some of the games that people have projected them to lose. The biggest thing is, as long as they come out there and compete every Saturday and show them that they are one or two players away from getting over that hump and turning this thing all the way around, you're going to have players saying, hey, maybe I can go there and I can be that difference maker. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. But anyway, we got... Mr. Feinbaum right here, man. And uh, like I said, he's an SEC guy too, man. Come on, man. He's supposed to think nobody's that good if they're not in the SEC. It is what it is. But let's just get right into it, and we're going to see what he has to say as he changed that tune just a tad. Uh, he, he shut all the naysayers up, uh, the, all those who said this was a terrible hire. He's, near, he's just a, he's a showman. What he's about to do is become the, the, the highest paid coach in the game. And Fact. when he leaves Colorado, at some point he will, uh, he's going to be in demand. All the schools that snubbed their nose at him a couple of years ago and a couple of months ago will not anymore. And what's really the most important part is players want to play for him. Chris, the other day after the win, Travis Etienne, who was a great star at Clemson, now with Jacksonville, the running back, tweeted, he said he's, his brother plays for Florida, which is a program in a lot of trouble. He said, little bro might need to go play for prime do you realize how that resonates and how many young players see that from a, an nfl star and Thanks. say you know what i think i want to head out to boulder too even a lost and oh here we go nebraska doesn't erase what we just saw last weekend and that's all we want to talk about man listen that's you got guys from the nfl vouching for you saying look when when somebody like travis etienne vouches for uh says something like that that's a big vouch they're saying you know what we we saw Florida use lose to to Utah, and um, 
that even if but even if and and it, and it was it was bad it, it was it, that, that's not a good loss but even if colorado did not win that game against tcu that's a good loss because they played them tough and it's like not only did you play them tough but you went in there and finished the job a lot of times that may not be the case i understand college football i'm not a pie in the sky guy i do feel like you go out and you play every game like it's your last and you play it like you're the only person on the field do your thing leave everything on the field and you try to win but we know that you cannot win them all but that don't mean you don't give it your darndest and you don't try and that's what the colorado buffaloes and coach prime are trying to do like you said we just want to be competitive and if we're competitive everything else will come you start out you start out trying to just 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 do the best that you can and, and, and it's just gonna be great, man. Listen, I understand that some people are naysayers. I understand that not everybody's gonna have the same uh, same perspective on this as as if you're a Buffalo's fan. Look, like I said, we all were Buffalo fans in the 90s. And so this is just a natural progression. Imagine being my age, 13, 14, 15 in the 90s when they were when they were winning and they were, you know, but came onto the national scene. And then you, you get in your 40s, 30 years later, not only are they back on the scene? But somebody that you that you idolized as a kid, I played defensive back. So that's why I'm gonna rock with Dion. I mean, Coach Prime, regardless. I played defensive back, so that's that's just how it is. But imagine that, and now somebody that you that you idolize and all that. Like you said, man, uh, a lot of the a lot of the people, a lot of the people they they come in here. Y'all see me with the scarf on when I'm when I'm when I'm doing the videos. Sometimes, man, I wear a bandana because because of uh, Coach Prime or what have you. It is what it is. So you say I go to, I go into people's homes. And, and that's how it is. So looking at it from that perspective, I think a lot of people, I mean, a lot of the hate and a lot of the doubt is, is just manifesting itself like that because they are afraid of what could possibly happen. He wins these three games, they go three and no, they're the center of the college football universe like Coach Spurrier said. And then you're gonna see people draw to him. And I know Coach Spurrier, I could just almost hear it in his voice saying, whew, I wish I would have been coaching back then with that portal. Do you understand the people I could have gotten, especially the quarterbacks I could have gotten? You know you can come to South Carolina. You're going to be on TV every day and you get to play uh, every game and you get to play for the head ball coach. Are you serious? And the numbers that you get to put up, as, uh, listen, the players that we got and that we got to keep in state were outstanding. But just think if we could have been, if we'd been able to pull a second stringer from from Alabama or or you know a second stringer from Georgia or a second stringer from Ohio State or somebody that just wasn't bro, it, it would have been crazy but y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section do y'all think it's just TV speak or do you feel like uh, uh some people are changing their tune a little bit I feel like they are and the only thing like you said gotta be competitive gotta go out there and win games and I, I, I they got a real strong chance to go bowling this year let me know what you think down in the comment section I'm gonna holler at y'all next time till next time it's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Gosh, baby, gosh, baby.